What happens to your body when you eat too much protein? Do you think eating a lot of protein is the key to a healthy diet? Think again. Eating too much protein can have serious consequences for your body. In this video, we'll reveal the hidden dangers of excessive protein intake and show you how to make sure you're getting the right amount for your needs. But first, what is protein? Protein is an essential macronutrient that plays a vital role in many bodily functions. It is made up of amino acids, which are the building blocks of muscle, skin, hair, and other tissues. Protein is also involved in hormone production, enzyme function, and immune system responses. There are two main types of protein, complete and incomplete. Complete proteins contain all nine essential amino acids, which our bodies cannot produce on their own. Incomplete proteins do not contain all nine essential amino acids. Good sources of complete protein include animal products such as meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy. Vegans can get their complete protein from soy products, quinoa, buckwheat, and nutritional yeast. Good sources of incomplete protein include plant-based foods such as beans, lentils, and nuts. So how much protein do we actually need? The recommended daily intake of protein for adults to maintain current muscle mass is about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. This means that a 75 kilogram adult should consume about 60 grams of protein per day. However, your protein needs may vary depending on a number of factors. Older adults may need more protein to help maintain muscle mass and prevent sarcopenia, a condition characterized by the loss of muscle tissue. Pregnant and lactating women need more protein to support the growth and development of their babies. And lastly, anyone lifting weights and exercising to increase muscle mass will also need more protein to create that muscle mass. In this situation, it's often recommended to eat anywhere from 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So what happens if we go above and beyond those values and we eat too much protein? Well, eating too much protein can have a number of negative consequences for your health. Here is a detailed explanation of what happens when you eat too much protein. Increased risk of kidney stones. Protein breaks down into waste products that are filtered out of the blood by the kidneys. Eating too much protein can overload the kidneys and increase the risk of kidney stones forming. Bone loss. Protein metabolism releases acids into the blood. To neutralize these acids, the body takes calcium from the bones. Over time, this can lead to bone loss and osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a loss of your bone density and can definitely increase your risk of hip fractures and other fractures if you were to fall. Dehydration. Protein is a hydrophilic molecule, meaning that it attracts water. When you eat too much protein, your body needs to use more water to process it. This can lead to dehydration, especially if you are not drinking enough fluids. Weight gain. Protein can be converted into glucose for energy. If you are eating more protein than your body needs for energy, the excess protein can and usually will be stored as fat. Digestive problems. Eating too much protein can cause digestive problems such as bloating, gas, and diarrhea. This is because protein is more difficult to digest. Kidney function. The kidneys are responsible for filtering waste products from the blood. When you eat too much protein, your kidneys have to work harder to filter out the excess protein. This can lead to kidney stones, like we discussed before, and other kidney problems. Liver. The liver is responsible for breaking down protein into amino acids. When you eat too much protein, the liver has to work harder to break down the excess protein. This can lead to liver inflammation and also liver damage. Heart. Eating too much protein can raise cholesterol levels and increase your risk of heart disease. Brain. Eating too much protein can lead to the accumulation of a substance called amyloid beta in the brain. Amyloid beta plaques are a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. So now that we've covered what happens if you eat too much protein, how much protein is actually too much? Of course, this answer will vary from person to person based on your current health and activity level. So when in doubt, consult your personal physician. But in general, you should not be eating more than two grams per kilogram of protein per day. Any amount above two grams per kilogram per day is unnecessary and not needed for maintaining or even building muscle mass. However, with this in mind, we need to point out that not all proteins are equal. 
eating 50 grams of plant-based protein like lentils is not the same as eating 50 grams of steak protein. This is because plant-based protein and animal-based protein have different levels of bioavailability. The body's ability to absorb and utilize animal-based protein sources is much higher than plant-based protein. The main difference between plant-based and animal protein is the source of the protein. Plant-based protein comes from plant foods such as beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, and tofu. Animal protein comes from animal foods such as meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy. Another difference between plant-based and animal protein is the amino acid profile. Amino acids are those building blocks of protein we discussed earlier, and animal proteins are considered a complete protein, meaning they contain all nine essential amino acids that our bodies cannot produce on their own. Plant proteins are often, not always, but often incomplete proteins, meaning they do not contain all nine essential amino acids. It is important to note that you can still get all nine essential amino acids from a plant-based diet by combining different plant proteins. For example, rice and beans are a complementary protein combination that provides all nine essential amino acids. And there are a number of benefits to eating plant-based protein. Plant-based proteins are generally lower in saturated fat than animal proteins. They are also a good source of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Eating plant-based protein has also been linked to a number of health benefits, such as a reduced risk of heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and some types of cancer. So now that we've talked a lot about protein and what happens if you eat too much, what are the signs of a protein deficiency? Protein deficiency happens when you do not get enough protein and that can be caused by a number of factors, including not eating enough protein-rich foods, having a medical condition that interferes with the absorption of protein, or losing protein through the urine or stool. The symptoms of protein deficiency can vary depending on the severity of the deficiency, but some common symptoms include muscle weakness and wasting, fatigue, edema, which is swelling, brittle hair and nails, slow wound healing, decreased immunity, or even stunted growth in children. In severe cases of protein deficiency, people may experience kwashiorkor or marasmus. Kwashiorkor is a condition characterized by edema, muscle wasting, and changes in skin and hair color. Marasmus is a condition characterized by severe wasting and weight loss. These conditions are not common in developed countries where we often see more issues with excess calorie intake. Now, the easiest way to monitor your protein intake is to read food labels and use meal planners like MyFitnessPal or another food calorie counting app that will keep track of your macros. This way you can be sure to get enough protein, but not too much. Most adults should aim to consume somewhere around 0.8 grams per kilogram of protein per day. If you take your weight in pounds, divide that number by 2.2 to get your weight in kilograms. Then you multiply your weight in kilograms by 0.8 to get the number of grams of protein you should eat per day. Of course, this is a rough estimate, and depending on your current weight and health conditions, that number should vary. So like we mentioned earlier, talk to your doctor or healthcare provider for solid recommendations. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.